UK YouTubers. This is Joe from Martin TV. Another quick game of Interplanetary Ice Spy going on here, and we're back on Mars, back in Gale Crater, and we're looking at Sol 67, uh, and particularly this Gigapan by Noble T. Great job this on this one here. Really nice Gigapan. This, in fact, this is a multi Gigapan, and uh, it has uh, a number of souls added to it, so it's really big. And when I zoom out, I'll show you what I mean. You've actually got three. This is the bottom one we're looking at, and we're looking over mainly to the right area here. Uh, but you can you can check out these other two. But most of the anomalies I've found, uh, not just recently, in the last couple of days, but in the distant past, have been in this area, uh, and it's in that sort of the, the zone. Where well, basically you're back early on in the first year that the rover was on uh, Mars. It basically took a couple of weeks to get itself up and running properly and about a month actually before it started really moving around, running a lot of tests and stuff. And then when, once it started going around sort of Sol 50, things started getting really interesting. And uh, then it got more and more interesting as it got to Sol sort of 60 to sort of 70 to 75, up to about, uh, I'd say up to about Sol 80, where it just gets too barren, but basically, uh, there, there's a load of stuff in here, and I'm just going to point out some of the things I've found and in the past, and some of the things I've found very recently, and uh, some of the things obviously other people have found, and I can't remember who they were because this was obviously years ago when this was initially came out. But of course, this is more recent. This is actually made up of the PDS images, which are actually way better than the, the normal JPEGs like we get here and here. So I'll have links to all these pages. Uh, so you can check out the individual images like we got here and the Gigapan. Uh, there's lots of interesting things here. Um, but for now, I'm just going to point out the main ones. And I'm sure there are many, many more things in here. There's lots of things which are a bit 50-50 in here, whether they're anomalies or not. And there's lots of things that I think are anomalies, but you may not. So a lot of it's down to interpretation, of course, and I'm not saying that all these things are necessarily dead animals or skulls or whatever, or, or uh, perhaps statues or whatever, um, but that's what they look like. And if you have seen my channel um, before, you will know that there is I have uncovered plenty of evidence for skulls and, and animal remains, and uh, especially statues on, on Mars in recent years and months. Okay, so let's crack on with it. There's quite a lot to get through here. Um, now, first of all, I'm going to show you each thing on, on the uh, Gigapan here. I've got this thing to start with. Now, lots of people made videos about this, saying it was some kind of giant worm coming out of the ground and with eyes and teeth and everything, but it's not. It's a rock. It's an odd-looking rock, so it's stuck a bit at an odd angle. But it has what looks like fungi growing on it, or some kind of uh, life forms. Now these may well be, may have been underwater, so these may be mollusks of some sort, or coral, or some kind of sea creatures. Um, let me quickly show you that in the folder. I'm going to show you each one. I've got enhancements of each thing here. Here's an enhancement of that. I've really brightened that up. I've, I've colour corrected it slightly, made it a bit more blue, and really pushed the brightness and contrast on that, especially the brightness, to show you that this looks like fungi growing on it. Oh, it may not be, of course, it could be something else, but they could be mollusks like uh, mussels or something, or um, barnacles even, you know, alien barnacles. I have seen these on many, many rocks, and usually on the underside, not on the top, or on the, the sunny side, but on the, the shadowy underside. Now that's the sort of thing that, that mollusks do. Uh, they shelter in the shady side of the rock uh, to protect them from radiation. Okay, so there we are. Uh, don't know whether they are or not. I mean, when you get closer, they don't really get any clearer. But this one was really bright. There's like a, a almost like a snail-shaped thing going on there. Uh, they're not all the same. Some are kind of more golden coloured. Some are sort of bluey, white colour. Very odd. And it's very similar to something I released recently. If you if you want to check it out on my channel. I'll just show you that video up here. Let's go back to there. Um, it reminds me of this other thing I, I published uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, which was the uh, 
Morris Standing Stone Structure at Burial Dolmen. Now that also has, it's a leaning structure, and in the shadowy area underneath it is some similar looking shapes and structures underneath, which look like mollusks or some kind of possible fungi or something like that. Okay, so check that out. I'll put a link to that at the end of the video anyway. Uh, anything that's relevant, I will put. I always put links at the end of the video so you can watch similar stuff and match it up with what I'm showing you in this video. Okay, so I, I always try to do that with my videos. So there is that. I'll get rid of that now because it's going to take up too much memory. And then there's this thing. Now, I did a video about this, I think, back in 2013, one of the really early videos I did, and uh, didn't do a terrible job, but my enhancement skills have got a bit better. There's tons of stuff in this part of the image, absolutely littered with weird, weird stuff. And most of it is rock, of course. And if this was underwater, which it, it probably was, uh, this area, then a lot of these things are probably just uh, molten lava that's hit the water and then solidified in an odd and interesting shape. Which is why some of these things look kind of like animals and stuff. But I actually think some of these things are actually dead animals. Why do I think that? Well, look at this. Uh, this is what I call the hippo, for obvious reasons. If you look at the front here, it looks like the front head, the front of a hippo's head, with a mouth, two nostrils. This is the mouth area. This is where the eyes would be here. And a, an encrusted and degraded body that looks like it's been kind of frozen uh, perhaps plastic perhaps it was blast frozen uh, when the atmosphere evaporated or largely evaporated um, or dissipated I should say uh, perhaps it was encased in mud in the bottom of this lake and perhaps it was predated upon and had the limbs torn off from this part here and here okay now I appreciate that's a bit hard to understand what I'm trying to get across here. So I've got an enhancement to show you of it. And here it is. And I will put a lot of these in at the end of the video as well. So you can you can really look at the, the raw image and then the enhancement next to it, as I always do. Okay, here's the enhancement. And I've gone in quite heavy with the uh, contrast there, just to really push these bone-like structures out. These look like bones, ribs, in fact. And there would have, if this was uh, <laughs> a hippo type creature, then it would have had a limb here, front leg, and another one here at the back, uh, a leg at the back. Um, or perhaps here even, uh, it's pretty hard to say. Maybe it had more than uh, four legs, I don't know. But <laughs> if it's anything like the creatures we have on Earth, it probably had four. Um, and you can clearly see, once I've enhanced it here, you can see the mouth quite clearly and the nostrils quite clearly and where the eyes were here. The big sort of uh, heavy duty kind of um, snout that you get on a, on a hippo. And we all know what hippos look like. And that to me looks like a hippo or a similar Martian equivalent of. I'm not saying it is a hippo. I'm saying it's similar to one. Okay, weird, I know but it's in the image and there are lots of other animal remains and skulls in the area. Let me, let's go back to the gigapans, that was that one done. I mean, if you look in the general area around here, there's all sorts of weird stuff that I've, I've looked at for years and thought this thing here looks like some kind of bottle that's encrusted when that's the end part of a bottle or, or a water container or something like that. There is actually a bottle here somewhere, here he is. Here's the bottle. I've done videos on that as well, years ago. Lots of weird stuff around it, but that looks like a bottle here with a label on the side, a white label of all things. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I found that. I think that was found by someone else. If you go back through my playlist to, to my earlier videos, you'll see it there and it should credit the person who found it as well underneath. I can't remember who it is now, it was many years ago now. Um, back in 2013, I think, uh, around then. There's loads of weird stuff here. There's a weird upright thing here which people pointed out, which I think I pointed out back in the same video as this. Uh, uh, there's loads of weird stuff here. There's also what looks a bit like a skull here, but it's probably not. But it seems to have a jaw bone at the bottom here and a possible eye socket there. I don't know. 
not really sure about that. I mean, you can make your own mind up on these. A lot of them are kind of iffy and uh, could go either way, really. Uh, <laughs> but basically, if you if you look at these things in this PDS Gigapan rather than the individual images like we have here, you get much clearer data and less compressed data so you can see better detail. This is why I really love the PDS Gigapans because they are excellent and they are so much better than the standard images that we get normally. So I recommend that a lot. It's really amazing Gigapan. There's also, uh, have I lost it? <laughs> now, now, over here, you also have this thing. Now, this isn't very clear. It's quite a long way back. It's, it's much further back than all the other things I've just showed you. It looks like a, a statue head or some kind of head of some sort. Now, one thing that becomes obvious with this when you enlarge it and crop, crop it and enlarge it is that it looks like it's been tampered with. Not by Neville T, of course. This is not part of the image that's joined it into two sections. In other words, sometimes what you get on the Gigapan is where the images are joined together, you sometimes get a line or, or a bit of distortion where they've been joined. Well, it doesn't always perfectly match, but here's the raw image, so it hasn't been done, that hasn't been done to it. I actually think the original image that I've got here has been doctored uh, because there seems to be something missing from the top of it. Um, I'll show you that now quickly in the folder because it's hard to see. I can't zoom in any further on the on the Gigapan. It will only zoom in so far. Now here is the clip from the Gigapan. And as you can see, there's a perfectly straight line there. Now this to me looks like the image has been damaged. You've got a line going all the way through, right the way through. And it's most obvious here. So it's almost like a section of the image has been moved or altered, like perhaps cut out even. Okay? So, this object may well have been more rounded at the top, I would I'd suspect. Um, but it kind of looks like someone's doctored the image and, and cut it. You can see a line going right way right through. So that's annoying, but you can still see that this looks like some kind of carved head or something. With squarish eyes, a nose, and a mouth with something coming out of it. Now I appreciate this a bit blurred. It's, it's bad quality because it's further back and in shadow. So you've really got to brighten it up to actually see. Here's the clip I took. I'll show you the, the little... There, I've, really, I've, I've colour corrected it there, it's all very blue. I've enhanced the shadows a bit. Um, I'm not really sure about this. I, I've been sitting looking at this for about uh, probably a year or two now and not bothered to publish it because it's so unclear but it looks like two square eye sockets. Now, yeah, well, humans or Martians wouldn't have a square eye socket, surely. So perhaps this is depicting or is actually an android or something like that. I don't know. Maybe that's wishful thinking. But whatever it is, um, it's very odd. And it's got a weird sort of nose thing and mouth going on here. Like it's got some sort of weird breathing apparatus coming out of it. Uh, just here. Very odd. I'll show you the other older enhancements I did, which I did ages ago. Uh probably a couple of years ago. Here's the clip. Now this is more distorted again because it's from the actual so-called raw image from NASA and you can see all these squares in it. So it looks pretty terrible. And I did a job of enhancing it there, but actually that is wrong because those rounded eye shapes are not there. But the mouth detail is pretty good. That's come out better. Okay. You can see the mouth detail and this weird thing coming out of it. And it's not the first skull-like thing or helmet-like thing we've seen with what looks like something protruding from the mouth. There are others, and I'll put a link at the end of the video for you to check it out. Um, one of the statue head things I found, if it is a statue, I mean, there is a lot of debate a bit at the moment whether actually a lot of these things are statues or not, and whether actually they're, they're fossils or they are Martians that have been kind of turned to stone in some way. Um, either naturally or by some kind of weapon. There, that is a possibility. I'm not going to rule it out. I can't rule it in either because I don't know. But uh, there is some debate on the uh, internet at the moment, especially on my Mars group, about whether these are actually um, fossils 
or statues. This is definitely a statue. Um, but a lot of these aren't. A lot of these are fossils, and a lot of these are look like they're encrusted. Some of these heads, um, and a lot of them seem to have things coming out of them as well, out of the mouth area, which is especially this one here. So that was interesting. Uh, not really sure. It's it's a long way back when you look at the the context of it. Look how far away that is. So it's quite large. I'd say it's over a foot high. It's probably possibly a foot and a half maybe but unfortunately because it's so far back you're never going to see a great deal of detail you really I always try and concentrate on things that are closer up in the images because uh, you just get more clarity all right so there was that and the last thing last but not least was a new find um, that I only recently I think found last night I think uh, it's right over here somewhere I'm trying to remember where it is I can't remember where it is. Uh, God, where is it? Is it on the right? We are, are we on the right one? Uh, it's not on this one. Darn. I do have the single image of it here. Okay, and it's by this kind of slightly semicircular uh, formation of rocks here. And uh, we have this thing. Now that looks like a rock, doesn't it? But even if if you look really carefully, let me zoom in. If you look really carefully, you can see a f two eye sockets, a mouth and a nose. Right, okay. Uh, it is on this gigapan, and I'm just trying to remember where it is. It's to the right here somewhere. I'll carry on anyway. It's definitely in here. It's in Sol 57. I have the individual page here, this one, Sol 57. So there will be a link to it directly. And the thing to do is to right click on the image and download save image as rather than go to the full resolution one because the full resolution one is actually worse than the one they use on the website as the main image to look at okay so right click and save as rather than full, Im full image download that because it is clearer it may be slightly smaller but it's got more information in it it's less compressed so you won't have all the distortion in the image so there we go um, that's not it let's go to here I've got the image here uh, somewhere at the top probably there we go here's the raw clip of the rock so called rock and even if you don't do anything to this you can see two eye sockets some teeth here and a chin well basically a, a lower jaw and a nose there so uh, you, you'll see it better when it's brightened up it's pretty grungy but it's there. Now this was taken from the actual raw image that I downloaded from the NASA site. So this is distorted, right? But you can still see some detail. Here's the image. Right? You've got to enlarge it and, and then do a few things to it, like brighten it right up. Um, so then I took a clip from the Gigapan, which is of course a PDS image. and. If only I could find it on here. <laughs> it's definitely here. It's by one of the. It's below one of these circle. There it is. It's actually nearer the middle. It's not right over to there. It's sort of towards the middle, sort of halfway. So you got the little semicircular thing there. You've got a curved rock just above it there, with a sharp curve, nice curve there, and you've got this. So you can actually see a lot more detail in the Gigapan because obviously. This is from a superior quality source image. And you can see teeth there, to one, two, on the bottom there, sticking up. Lower jaw, maxilla, nose, eye, eye socket. Sort of broken. An odd shape, really odd shape. Uh, why is it that shape? Don't know. Is this a, a carving? Is this an actual skull? Who's to say there weren't skulls this shape on Mars? They, you know, this is an alien planet after all. This reminds me a bit of that kind of hybrid alien you see in the alien film, uh, Alien Resurrection, I think it was, uh, one of the alien films, where you see the hybrid humanoid kind of alien crossbreed, and it's kind of kind of human kind of alien hybrid kind of uh, thing going on. I'll see if I can dig up a picture of that, stick it at the end for you, because uh, it's pretty scary. This and it looks really quite ugly and. Horrific, I, I should say. Uh, 
here we go. Here's the clip, raw clip from the Gigapan. Nothing done to this, just enlarged. Rotated and enhanced. There we go. Enhanced again, a bit more brightness. Look at this detail. Teeth. Nose. Eyes. And a very odd shaped head. What the hell is all that about? Now, this may actually be a normal shaped skull that's been encrusted in, in mud. And the mud's kind of solidified to it. So this may actually not be the original shape. I'll try and demonstrate that now. Uh by going on here and I'll kind of draw on it to show you what I mean um, it kind of looks a bit better from from that distance okay if you get too close like I just did it, it's a bit hard to focus on it but I actually think the head may have come round to here like this and a lot of this is extraneous solidified clay that's stuck to the skull and made it look a funny shape all right so it's like a, it's a fossil. It looks like a fossil to me. It may not be, of course. But if you look around here, you can see this curve. I think that's probably the the limit of the skull. And if you were to chip away at this with a with a little chisel, like uh, archaeologists do, that's carefully, you'll probably find that that is a separate part of, to it. Um, what was I going to do? I was going to hang on. Uh, Right, I was going to put it in there, wasn't I? Right, let's, let's actually do it with the smaller one, because that's probably a little bit easier to look at. I'm just going to draw a line in there. Uh, what colour do we want? We want a bright colour, don't we? Uh, let's go Let's go yellow. And a smaller brush. Uh, size, let's go down to about 20-something. Right, OK. I actually think the skull would have come to here and then to there like this now that's pretty crude I know but it gives you an idea let's have a smaller brush size that was ridiculously large and uh, let's do it in white yeah let's try again that to me looks uh, maybe not quite perhaps a bit further out like that more humanoid looking obviously there's the bottom of it there so that's that may be extraneous kind of uh, clay like I said it's kind of stuck to it and uh, this is a skull and quite a good one if you ask me was still some nose detail and another thing that I that makes me wonder whether these really are statues or not is the fact that the noses seem to be intact. Now, of course, with humans, when we die and are left out in the sun, that the flesh kind of rots or gets eaten away from our faces. I mean, we're left with a nose cavity or nasal cavity. Uh, I do wonder whether the, uh, some of these Martians had a kind of exoskeleton and they had much more hardened material on the, the exterior of their faces, perhaps. This is why perhaps they preserve so much better, as well as the the different gas levels on Mars, of course, and uh, the lack of oxygen. Of course, oxygen is one of the things that makes things deteriorate. When you remove oxygen and mo uh, moisture, of course, then things could last for millions of years, perhaps. But this looks like an encrusted skull, and it probably wasn't that shape. But there we have it. We have what looks like a skull there. And... Uh, much like some of the other skulls, it still has eyes in there. Uh, why would it still have eyes? Well, let me show you an example of something that I've been... I keep talking about, but I haven't actually showed a picture of. Um, there's this thing on Earth, which is a dead seal, OK? Now, this has been estimated uh, somewhere between six and 7,000 years old and is perfectly preserved. This is, this is frozen, dead on the surface of Antarctica, in a, on a barren part of Antarctica where it never rains, well, uh, you might get a little bit of snow but basically it's, it's freezing cold most of the year round um, and this has been dried and, and f frozen and dried or freeze dried, desiccated and it still has eye detail here, you still see eye detail and this is probably 
thousands of years old and there are many examples of these and other animals that live there things like walruses and seals and sea lions that kind of thing and penguins that have been found in certain areas and they are thousands of years old they've been preserved perfectly this is very similar to what I think is happening on the surface of Mars because uh, the, the conditions are similar it's very cold at night and during the day uh, unless it's summer when it gets quite hot during the day but if these things are blast frozen and, and desiccated and dried out and also the, so the, the actual sand and soil on Mars is, all, uh, is, is very high in sulphur which is a preservative and probably in salt which is also a preservative and will suck the moisture out of these things and help them preserve and mummify naturally okay I have explained this process before, but um, uh, the seal on uh, the seal in Antarctica is a good example of it, and it proves that it's possible. And also, of course, uh, there may have been life in Gale Crater much later than elsewhere on Mars, because basically, if, if there was a cataclysm, which there was, probably a nuclear war, um, they may have come to Gale Crater for shelter. And uh, when, if there was a tsunami, which there probably was things would have been washed into Gale Crater and that's why we see so many things lying around because there was, they were probably washed there and swept into this area in a violent tsunami of some sort and uh, that would explain the number and diversity of all the finds that we have in these areas especially the lower lying parts here okay so that was pretty much it for this one there is I, I do recommend you look at this gigapan there is so much to see here there are dozens and dozens of things here I've only touched on some of them today. I will put some clips, of close-up clips of these things that I've just showed you. And if there's any other really interesting things, I'll, I'll put them in as well. But I'll let you have a look because there's loads more to discover here. So thank you for watching, everybody. Please share on social media. Please give the thumbs up. Thanks for, for uh, having you on board. And I will see you soon.